series for parents and uh, students. Today this is really geared towards students. Uh, and what we want to talk about here today is the biochemistry of bilirubin. Now some of you may be familiar with our older video on the biochemistry of, video, of bilirubin and that is actually a really good video but some of the graphics weren't so easy to see so what I'm really trying to do here today is just to redo that in a format that's a little bit easier to see. Um, so what we want to look at is, is what happens with bilirubin. Now the first thing that's important to realize is that bilirubin is in fact a planar molecule. So this is what we have, what we have drawn here is in fact a molecule of bilirubin. Okay, and, and the fact that it's two dimensionals here on the, um, on the screen is actually a pretty good representation of reality. There are two double bonds inside bilirubin. It exists in what is known as the ZZ configuration. What that means is the big chains that come off of bilirubin, and there's two of them, they're symmetric. So there's one here and then one a couple of molecules down, uh, go in opposite directions. So one goes down and one goes up. This is the way it exists in nature and, um, and within the human body. This is lipid soluble. Okay, the way we treat this in medicine is by dumping in some UV radiation, okay, light, and specifically we want 400, come on, there we go, and 50 nanometers of light. Okay, now we aren't using laser beams here, so what we really wind up using is light in the range of uh, 425 to 475 with a mean of 450 nanometers. Okay, and what that does is it will transiently weaken this double bond here. It does not snap the double bond. This is not ionizing radiation. We're not going to completely break anything down here, but it will transiently alter that radi or transiently alter that double bond and allow it to rotate into what we refer to as the EZ configuration or yeah the EZ configuration. And in the EZ configuration, you'll remember from your basic organic chemistry, that at least one of your double bonds goes the same direction, or one of your large R groups goes the same direction. So they're coming down here. Now these R groups are gigantic, okay? So they tend to bump into one another. This is a high energy form. But this form is water soluble. and so it's excretable in urine. Okay, but the key here, what I want you to learn from this video, is that we're not breaking this double bond, all right? We're not changing covalent chemistry here. We are transiently weakening it, weakening it and allowing for a new configuration, and that new configuration has therapeutic benefits for the patient. Um, and, and that's really where we're going with this. Now, I do have, on the older video, some three-dimensional models for you to look at. But again, because this is a, um, a two-dimensional, because bilirubin is a two-dimensional molecule, this is a pretty good representation of what's going on in, in the real system. So um, this may be able to answer all of your questions. So this is Dr. Windish from Sparks Pediatric. And Adolescent Medicine. As always, if we can be of assistance here in our office, we'll be happy to see your patient same day. Area code 775.
three, five, nine. Seven, one, one, one. We'll get you in same day. Please remember, we really can't help you over the internet. That is not in your best interest. I uh, hope you like the new graphical format, uh, and we'd be interested in your feedback.